Hello everybody. Now uh, this particular module I will try to explain uh, this processing of the ceramic. So, we understand the processing of the different kind of the uh, polymeric material. So, mainly the plastics. Now, what a ceramics can be processed? So, first we understand what is the what is the ceramic actually. After that we will try to look into what are the different processing techniques can be followed in case of the ceramic material. So, ceramic is basically resembles with the potter's clay or sometimes you can consider the ancient uh, part they consider this as a clay product. So, in that sense uh, the ceramics uh, can be as a compound of the metallic and the non-metallic elements usually the ceramics associated with these things. So, we see that among the all material ceramic crystals have the most intricate structure due to their composition of the atoms with the varying size. So, there are so many varieties of the different ceramics are they are associated with that and it is having very specific uh, particular applications. But of course, the ceramics are compounds of the all the metallic and non-metallic elements combining all these things, but it is having something different properties which is completely different from the uh, metallic component. Now, when you look into uh, the structure of the ceramic component, it is a uh, this bonding between these atoms is generally covalent and ionic bondings occurs. So, usually so that is why from that sense the covalent or the ionic bond and, and such it is actually much more stronger as compared to the uh, metallic bond. So, usually that is why the strength of the ceramic metal is usually more as compared to the uh, metallic component. But at the same time the hardness is very uh, hardness and thermal and electrical resistance are significantly higher as compared to the in uh, compared to the metals. So, hardness is very high, the therm but thermal and electrical conductivity is actually very low uh, associated with the ceramic material and of course, for ceramic material we, we, we can compare with respect to the metals also. So, that is why ceramics may be available as a single crystal or in the polycrystalline form. So, we know the grain size having the major role for the to understand the strength of the ceramic component. So, it is having this the the ceramics or properties of the ceramic material, but usually when there is a finer grain size means associated with the strength is relatively high and stubbornness is also uh, relatively higher associated with the uh, ceramic component. So, we see that ceramic is basically is the example of the ceramics we can say the clay any clay product can be these are the made from is the usually considered as a ceramic uh, component other than the ceramics are basically is a combination of the metallic and non-metallic elements. For example, aluminum is a metallic component, but when it produces aluminum oxides, the aluminum oxide, so we can consider aluminum oxide as a ceramic material. So, properties of the aluminum oxide and with respect to aluminum are completely different. So, now we will try to look what are the different types of the ceramics. Uh, we can find out the different application, engineering application of the ceramics associated with this thing. So, overall we see the characteristics or properties of the ceramics is something like that we can summarize the characteristic or properties of the ceramics like that. It is hardness is very high. So, having high hardness, very good high temperature resistance properties is also there, very good mechanical strength associated with the ceramic parts, but ceramic is very very brittle material ok and then it usually acts as a electrical insulators, thermal conductivity is also very low. So, therefore, in that cases when there is a temperature difference, so, so basically the strain with the generation of the thermal strain it simply breaks because it is it is brittle material. Even resistance to the chemical corrosion is also there. So, based on that we can find out lots of application of the uh, ceramics. Uh, it is a very low elongations uh, under the application of the stress. So, elongation the absorbed deformation is actually very very low associated with the, the ceramic material. And that is why with the application of the low when it cannot able to sustain that uh, deformation it simply breaks. So, it is the typical properties of the brittle material also. At the same time wear resistance is also very high associated with the ceramics. So, we can see that we can understand that uh, these are the typical behavior or characteristic uh, behavior of uh, ceramic material. Based on that we can find out the lots of application of the ceramic material in the different area. For example, that uh, crucible so, where there is a need to hold the liquid molten metal. So, that liquid molten the crucible is usually made of the ceramic. So, it means that it can resist the, the it the retain its hardness even at very high temperature and strength is also significantly high 
even at the high temperature. So that's why it is finder application in case of crucible. Sometimes we use the pottery products, uh, even tiles, sanitary wear. So we can see the most commonly use the, the ceramic tiles. We can see the ceramic tiles also, it's a very hard. It is having very good wear resistant properties also. That's why we can utilize uh, in the form of a tiles, this, uh, the ceramic material. And sometimes we can use the pottery elements, uh, pottery products, we can use the uh, ceramic also. And, and you see the other application of the ceramics is the very high uh, high end applications such as ceramic matrix composites also can be produced using the ceramic. Disc break. So, disc break, uh, we can see the disc break, the wear resistance is the most important properties. So, that is how we can use the having since having ceramics are very good wear resistance properties, we can utilize in the form of a disc breaks. We can use the wall bearing, bioceramics, bulletproof jacket, and the tiles in the space shuttles. All kind of the components can be made of the ceramics. So, the weight or the, this thing can vary of the in case of the um, ceramic and which is might be comparable as compared to the uh, metallic components. So, usually ceramics are lighter as compared to the metals. Just an example say aluminum and aluminum oxide if you compare. So, oxides are relatively lighter or density is low as compared to the uh, metallic component. So, you see with this app specific properties of the ceramics, we can find out the lots of application. Now, if you look into the ceramics can be classified in the different ways, but uh, due to its composition, properties and application based on that we can find out the different classification of the ceramic components. We can see the uh, classification of the ceramics, one is the based on the compositions, another is the based on the applications. So, based on composition we can see the oxide ceramics, so the composition the carbide, so metallic carbide, metallic oxide they produce the ceramic, so in nitrite ceramics sarmets ceramics the glass ceramics all that the depending on the composition these are the different types of the ceramics and based on the application we can see the glasses can be considered the ceramics clay product the different application area we can see refractories we can use the we can use the abrasives particles cement these all are the examples of the ceramics but this is based on the applications advanced ceramics for the very specific application. So, we have we can cater, we can develop these different types of the ceramic material which is we can find out the very advanced uh, with the very special applications we can produce this kind of the advanced ceramic material. So, there is a wide variety of the ceramic materials are there and we see all this having the different categories of the, uh, the applications area. Now, if you look into the oxide ceramics. So, we see that more important oxide ceramics are the alumina and zirconia. So, these are the most important ox ceramics oxides ox or oxide ceramics which is having lots of application in a different area. We see the alumina Al2O3. So, alumina is most widely used the oxide ceramics. It is having hardness is very high, strength moderate strength, but the alumina is suitable uh, in electrical and thermal insulation. So, this particular See aluminum, we can see this how the properties can vary because aluminum is the thermal conductivity or electrical conductivity is very good. So, but in that sense, but alumina which is converted to oxides when you consider as a ceramic. So, this can be used as electrical insulation or thermal in insulation in, in that way you can utilize this part. Even alumina can be used the cutting tool, you see the uh, different uh, cut since it is very hard. Uh, very hard and uh, having the very uh, high strength even at uh, elevated temperature. So, therefore, it can be used as a cutting tools or it can be used as the abrasives we can find out in the grinding tool also. So, that also the alumina can be utilized there in the grinding tool. Then zirconia is the another kind of the uh, uh, ceramic oxides. So, it is having the high strength and toughness thermal expansion is close to the uh, cast iron. We can see the thermal expansion very close to the cast iron. We know cast iron is kind of the brittle material. So, zirconia the thermal expansion is also close to that in terms of the, the thermal expansion. But it is also suitable for the very high temperature applications, but in sometimes you can use the metallurgical furnace lining. So, with the, within the metallurgical furnace where there is a need to reach the very high temperature, so that furnace lining can be used made of the zirconia. So, even zirconia can be used the jet engine also, jet engine component, this zirconia can be utilized. Nuclear fuel cladding, zirconia can be utilized or zirconia can be utilized for making the cutting tool also. So, all kind of the applications we can find out the main applications of the oxide ceramic. Similarly, there are three major types of the carbide ceramics. 
carbide ceramics is the one is the tungsten carbide, titanium carbide, another is the silicon carbide. So, we see that we can not carbide is mainly we can find out the uh, application in the making the cutting tool also. So, this is the most application we can find out for the carbide, so carbide ceramics, so but in, in case of the cutting tool, but you can see the tungsten carbide is the particles with the cobalt as a binder. So, in this case the cobalt can act as a binder and you see the this tungsten carbide uh, this usually ceramics in this case cutting tool is mostly follow the powder metallurgy technique to produce the cutting tool made of the ceramics because other manufacturing process is not exactly the suitable to handle the ceramics. So, anyway we will discuss the different techniques processing techniques for the ceramic material also later on, but tungsten carbide it is having the cobalt work as a binder and we can see the toughness increases with the cobalt content. So, with the when cobalt content increases toughness increases we can cater the properties also depending upon the, the cobalt associated with the tungsten carbide. So, with the cobalt content whereas hardness strength and the wear resistance actually decreases when you will in increasing the cobalt. So, depending upon the properties we can optimize the uh, cobalt content as a binder in case of the tungsten carbide. Even titanium carbide has the titanium and the molybdenum as a has titanium and molybdenum has a binder. So, therefore, uh, in this cases uh, it is not as tough as tungsten carbide. So, it is titanium carbide is not as tough as tungsten carbide, but here titanium and the molybdenum can be used as a binder elements. Even there is a silicon carbide also, silicon carbide is the is a very high strength can retain its strength even at elevated temperature. So, that is why it is used for the high temperature applications in the in specific to heat engine. So, heat engine we can use the, the silicon carbide at the same time silicon carbide is basically good resistance to wear it can it can resist the thermal shock and the corrosion resistant properties are also there. So, depending upon the, um, the nature of this properties of the silicon carbide we can find out the applications area of silicon carbide. Now, we will try to look into the nitrites uh, ceramics. So, nitrite ceramics are basically cubic boron nitrite, these are the most widely known or uh, widely uh, this widely used uh, ceramic nitrite that is called the cubic boron nitrite, titanium nitrate and the silicon nitrite. So, all can the produce kind of the nitrite, these are the examples of the nitrite ceramics, but we see the application of the cubic boron nitrite we can find out the second hardest substrate after the diamond. So, a diamond we can consider the uh, having the highest hardness, the next second highest hardness is having the cubic boron nitride. So, that is why it is used in the cutting tool or abrasive uh, particles in case of the grinding tool we can find out this application of the cubic boron nitride. Titanium nitride is used, used mainly for the coating of the cutting tools over coating of the cutting tool. So, it is it improves the so when you put the coating of the um, titanium nitrate on the cutting tool it improves the tool life of the uh, cutting tool and of course it is also known having the low friction uh, characteristics associated with the titanium nitrate so that's how you can we can put in a cutting tool in the form of a coating on the cutting tool but silicon nitrate has a high resistance to the creep properties so at elevated temperature and of course, it is associated with the low thermal expansion and high thermal conductivity thus it resists the thermal shock also. So, therefore, uh, it is silicon nitride having the creep resistance is very good, low thermal expansion having and but high thermal conduct relatively high thermal conductivity is associated with this thing. So, therefore, it resists the any kind of the uh, thermal shock associated with the silicon nitride. So, these are the these are the typical behavior or typical properties of the uh, nitrite ceramics. Now, there is another type of ceramic that is called the glass ceramics. So, glass ceramics is the we know the glass is an amorphous material, but the glass ceramic is material which is processed through the control crystallization of the glass. So, it is processed through that particular process, uh, but uh, control crystallization of the glass will produce the glass ceramics also. So, we know the ceramics is also amorphous material it means that this atomic structure is basically uh, not, it may not follow the regular arrangement of the atoms over a long distance. So, that is why it, it is a kind of the amorphous material we consider as a glass. So, amorphous phase more than one crystalline phase also associated with this thing when it is produced when uh, this particular glass ceramic but when it is produced by a control crystallization uh, procedure. So, basically the 
crystallization procedure we can follow for this particular glass then it converted to the glass ceramics. So definitely glass ceramics also in the uh, easily exist in the amorphous space and it is might be having more than one crystalline phases is available associated to the glass ceramics. So the glass ceramics hold the processing advantage of the glass and the special characteristics of the ceramics. So it is like that processing advantage of the glass so what uh, and the, at the same time it is also having the special characteristics of the ceramics uh, it's a it's a uh, uh, this hold and uh, this kind of the behavior associated with the glass ceramics so therefore but glass ceramics is basically harder than that of the original glass therefore glass ceramics also have a almost near zero coefficient of thermal exp expansion so near zero thermal expansion coefficient means we cannot even up with the application of the heat we cannot expand th during the application of the any kind of the thermal load or mechanical load but they have thermal shock resistance because of the absence of the porosity because in this particular material uh, ceramics is sometimes we can produce the might be having some kind of the porosity during the and it is a one of the common defect associated with the ceramics but in this cases uh, thermal shock resistance they have very good thermal shock resistance because in the absence of the porosity thermal shock resistance is very good uh, which is associated with the glass ceramic materials but of course glass ceramics also having the option opportunity to further improve the uh, the their composition and through the heat treatment techniques or accordingly it can alter the uh, properties or improvement of the properties is also possible associated with the glass ceramics we know in general we know the uh, glass ceramics are poor conductor of the electricity but glass ceramics can be made super conductive in basically one very specific operating conditions but of course it is a very special this the processing techniques needs to follow to make it uh, super conducting of the glass ceramics. So you see that the glass ceramics is having uh, some uh, properties can be in between the glass and the, the complete uh, in, the, in the ceramics but very specific properties can be catered through the controlling of the crystallization process of the glass for example we can reach the glass ceramics can reach uh, almost near zero coefficient or glass ceramics can be super conductivity but it needs very special treatment during the processing of the uh, glass now shaping of the ceramics so several techniques are available for processing of the ceramics that we know we understand the different types of the ceramics now how to process the ceramics so of course there are different shape uh, we can produce of the ceramic there are different ways different manufacturing techniques need to follow but of course it depends on the the type of the ceramics what type of the ceramics and what are the shapes we are looking for so for example processing of the some ceramics such as the pottery floor tiles generally does not require the same level of the control of the material so some sort of the when with the producing of the ceramics component at that time to some extent it is necessary to control the uh, processing technique such that this the in this cases the manufacturing techniques is not entirely independent of the types of the materials but manufacturing process is some sort influenced by the the type of the ceramic material so that's why and for example the generally does not require to the same level of the control of the materials and processes similarly what we can process the silicon nitride and silicon carbide i mean to say that different types of the ceramics might be having the different kind of the uh, processing techniques associated with the ceramics so all uh, all kind of the ceramics is not comes under the one type of the manufacturing or processing techniques so overall you see that the ceramics is easily first with the raw materials we, we usually cross the raw material so it is better first we try to create the the powder in the powder form it is, is the ceramic materials mostly started with the raw materials in the form of a powder then once they collect the crossing the raw material uh, create the raw materials in the form of a powder by crossing the uh, different ceramic components so then in these cases we see the forming shaping with the shaping means the the take the particular shape of the ceramic the component shaping the shaping can be done this thing slip casting process it can be follow the extrusion process it can be follow the pressing process it can be follow the injection molding operation so these are the techniques which gives the specific shape of the uh, ceramic component so that's why uh, once it is done shaping this for after that we follow the uh, the additional steps also drying then sometimes firing sintering is also required and we follow some kind of the finishing operation these are the associated process of the uh, the component which is 
with the whole we can say the complete uh, processing of the ceramic techniques along with the uh, along with the particular forming or uh, shaping of the ceramics we need the uh, additional process which is the drying process firing sintering finishing operation need to follow to get the the one to produce the ceramic component steps involved in the making the ceramic uh, components now first step of the ceramic processing we understand it's a crushing process crushing is the crushing is the raw materials into the very fine powder particle so basically convert to the very fine powder particle uh, following the crushing operation which is associated with the ceramic component once it is done then mixing with the some additives or impart with a certain desirable characteristics uh, like that so if you want to mix we add some additives to bring certain characteristics of the ceramic component also and once it is done and finally uh, we follow the shaping shaping means there are so many shaping processes i already discussed the shaping process shaping of the ceramic forming shaping of the ceramics in the slip casting extrusion pressing and injection molding these are the steps is follow in the forming shaping once it is done then we follow the drying operation and the firing the material so these are the very basic steps associated with the processing of the ceramic material now we see the ceramic powder processing can be has two different options so how to create the ceramic powder one is the mechanical process another is the chemical process so mechanical process usually crushing the in the milling operation in the ball milling usually use or grinding milling we can utilize to prepare the raw materials in the form of a powder or small particles of the ceramics but at the same time a, a large number of chemical method can also exist uh, also exist uh, for the processing of the ceramic material that is for example solid state reaction process some uh, a precipitation process sol gel method these are the methods to produce the the raw material uh, uh, the ceramic powder these are the chemical process we can use the uh, ceramic powder so i mean to say the ceramic powder is sometime it is not directly available we can follow certain procedure chemical reaction chemical procedure from there we can produce the the ceramic powder so this is the processing of the ceramic that means the raw material the formation of the raw material of the ceramic is sometimes is the in the form of a, usually in the form of a powder so that after taking this powder we can take the different steps manufacturing uh, steps or uh, processing techniques you can follow to make uh, the final product assisted to the uh, ceramic material so overall ceramic processing we'll try to discuss the forming of the ceramics so uh, in that that particular steps we have the different step which, which is called the slip casting process extrusion process pressing and the injection molding actually we'll try to focus on this this processing techniques of the ceramics these four processing techniques of the ceramics but of course we see there are so many secondary operations also associated with the uh, ceramic process so it is not so uh, the it depends on the what kind of the ceramic materials we are handling or what uh, we are producing the ceramic uh, raw materials uh, during the, um, the uh, before processing uh, before apply any kind of the manufacturing process to reach to the final component or the final product which is made of the ceramic component so this is the just overview of the different the ceramic materials and their uh, uh, their uh, different techniques to follow for the processing of the uh, ceramic material so next class i'll try to discuss about the this processing techniques in details which is associated to the ceramic materials so for the time being that's all uh, thank you very much for your kind attention